Hello everybody, this is Raconator, and welcome to the first of hopefully many Raconator plays. Now this is actually my second attempt at doing this. I tried to do it, what was it, Friday? Yeah, Friday. And unfortunately some complications rose with transferring the files and uh, the file became corrupt and I could no longer use it. So this is uh, take two of the Legend of Spyro A New Beginning Part 1. Now this is a game I didn't play until I was 18, 19. Uh, wasn't really into Spyro until I saw stuff for Dawn of the Dragon and then I started to uh, look into it more and found out this was a trilogy and fell in love with it. This game's from 2005, I think. Gosh, it's making me old. So we're going to start over the file I had originally set up. And we'll go from the very beginning. And I'll try to keep my voice down during cutscenes so everybody can enjoy the story as much as I have. In the year of the dragon in a world beyond the realms. I, like all the others, awaited the birth of the dragon of whom the prophecies foretold. But the Dark Master heard the prophecies as well. I should have hidden the eggs long before, but I... I thought we were ready. I thought they were safe. Oh. I was wrong. Save them! The dark armies have come! So something I've never quite understood is why they only have four guarding these, uh, all, all these eggs that are supposedly the future of your race. Uh, I understand that they're the guardians, but the future of your race is kind of important to protect, so why not have, you know, a freaking army protecting them? I don't know. Nitpicking. May the ancestors look after you. May they look after us all. And like I said, I didn't get into this until after the third game was already out. So what I wish I could do is go back in time and uh, find out from a big classic Spyro fan how they felt about this uh, remake that they did. Just this opening alone, what they what their feelings were about it. I don't know, just... It's, just, it's completely different than... <laughs> than what the classics were like. It's... The graphics... Uh, I mean, it's 2005 GameCube graphics. It's good for its time. But the music is still... Eventually, the egg came to amazing. But a family of dragonflies gathered round, wondering what magnificent creature could possibly live inside. They didn't have to wonder for long. I want to see Baby Spyro. Oh well. How could they possibly pass him off as a dragonfly when he was just born bigger than they are? Uh, again, nitpicking. What emerged from the egg frightened them at first, but finally amazed and astonished them. Eight, nine, 
ten. Here I come. It was a purple dragon, who they eventually adopted and raised as one of their own. They named him Spyro, and he grew up alongside Sparks, the young dragonfly who was born the same day. In fact, the two were almost like brothers. The more oddly matched yet compatible pair of brothers the world has never seen. Never catch me this time, purple boy. As for Spyro, he, like all of us, accepted the world into which he was born, believing he was one of them. A big purple one of them chosen, but one of them nonetheless. Hey, Spyro, Gullible's written on that mushroom. Yeah, the, this game also has a, the series really has a star studded uh, cast. I mean, Elijah Wood, Gary Oldman, David Spade even. Yeah, they got all these stars in it. It's just for a game about a purple dragon. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that's pretty amazing that they managed to get the people they did to do all these voices. Heck, they got Mark Hamill, freaking Luke Skywalker. Let's play a, a certain villain in the third one that I won't spoil for anybody who hasn't seen these games yet. If my voice is a little nasally, uh, allergies are killing me right now. The biggest change in we're not allowed in there. What's that? Excuses, excuses. Catch up or give up, Chunky. Chunky. Anyways, the biggest difference from these games compared to the classics is obviously the combat. The fact that there is combat. Instead of just torching or charging into baddies. So are we inside a dragon right now? Like, let's go back for a sec. Is that supposed to be like a giant dragon? I mean, it's something. It's obviously, it's got bones, so I don't know. It's just a lot bigger than uh, any adult dragon we see in this game, which is you know only. Four. Well, five if you count the main boss. Uh, I don't know. Just one of my bigger gripes with this series is their lack of, uh, uh, whatchamacallit. It's just story built. They, they build the story, but they don't explain anything and they don't go in. To much depth about the surroundings, the history. The... Yeah, I, I just went. I wish they went more in depth on things. Thought all you guys was gone. Stop it. Rude. Let's 
Stop being so rude. I'm trying to... Trying to do something cool here. Okay, kind of cool. I mean, yeah, the combat's just pretty much the same thing over and over and over again, but... It's, it's, it's cool for a little bit. Running away from the dynamite. Okay, you're right next to that blast. I should have killed you. Yes. Yes, it was. I got a report to Cinder. Cinder? Who's that? I don't know who that is. I've never played this game. Never played it 20 times. And now we can breathe fire. Like all dragons should. Fire blast. Oh man, that's a powerful fire attack. But these are fighting types, so... It'd be only average. So if he thinks he's been been a dragonfly this whole time, how does he know how to fight? Because Sparks certainly didn't teach him. Actually, singe the the cage. Oh, that's a pretty cool detail. You almost torched me, dude. Wait. You breathe fire. So I'm just about ready to blow the top off that place and kick that guy's booty when Spyro let loose with some serious flame, dude. No joke. Flame from the mouth. Well, I I, I was just trying to help. No, yeah, some help. You nearly turned me to ashes, dude. Mom, Dad, you should have seen him. He came out breathing. Fire! All right, I tell you, it was crazy. You don't believe me, Spyro? Tell him. Well, it's true, Dad. I swear. I just got real mad, opened my mouth, and whoosh, Flame City. It's <sighs> oh, I believe you both. <laughs> whoosh, Flame City. Day would come. What day? The day? Ah, uh, it's a cringy line. So that was the night that Spyro learned he wasn't a dragonfly after all, but in fact an exile from an unknown distant land. So, you, you mean I, I'm not your real son? You are our real son. It's just that you came from somewhere else. Far away, where wars rage on and on, and the innocent seem to always pay the price. It wasn't long after that night that Spyro decided to venture forth and find his home. So that's it, huh? Leaving sparks behind the old homestead? Not how, does, how does his mom know about wars? Your home, sparks. But I just found out that my home is out there somewhere. Is she not telling us something? And I've got to find it. Besides, I'm not leaving you behind. I'm just leaving you where you belong. Well, I thought I belonged with you. Because I'm always with you. But I guess I was wrong, huh? I'm sure I'm wrong in a lot of things. You know what? You're right, I'm wrong. Don't worry about him, Spyro. You know how hot-headed he can be. You'll see him when you get back. 
Now, now, son. Keep your head up. Keep your nose clean and use that breath of yours wisely. All gifts come with a price. Don't listen to your With great power comes great responsibility. It's all any of us can do. Uh, it was way overused in the early 2000s. All thanks to Spider-Man. So, hard as it was, Spyro left the only family he had ever known and journeyed on to where he did not know. Luckily, he had a literal path to follow, so... Very scary. And this is where I'm going to stop for this recording. Um, hopefully it'll turn out well this time and I don't have to do this all over again. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed and I hope to do this again very soon. Uh, yeah, I've uh, been a little nervous to do something like this, uh, but you know, hopefully you guys like it and want to see more. Uh, until next time, have a good day.